Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors, I would like to say welcome for joining us at our annual Winter Summit and for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today. Mayors play a vital role in communicating with the citizens of New Jersey. They come into contact with our residents on a wide variety of issues, from potholes to what's happening in Trenton or Washington. Our goal today is to introduce you to the 2018 leadership that will be shaping the decision-making process in the months to come. I am very proud to welcome all that are joining us on the dais this morning, as our Executive Director, Jack Morrissey, had already introduced. But more specifically, I would like to take a moment to introduce our guest of honor and keynote speaker, our Governor Phil Murphy. Governor Murphy. Governor Murphy has hit the ground running, moving forward on many issues that face our state, bringing forth executive orders that clearly state his position on many topics in the short time that he has been in office. It is truly exciting to have a statesman in the position of governor of the state of New Jersey. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Governor Phil Murphy. Before I go to the podium, I have the honor of swearing Chuck in as president. So that's not as president of the United States, although it's no, 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 no. And I told him more on that later. I told him he could swear at me, also. You know, he had to. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So I state your name. I, Mayor Chuck Shirello, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States and the Constitution and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And the governments established. And the governments established in the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All duties of the office. All duties of the office of. of President of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors. President of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Everything I say from this moment on will be a letdown. <laughs> that was a huge honor for me. Uh, good morning, Mayor. As you say, Mayor, here, here and about 150 people turn around. So good morning, folks. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. I wish I could stay. There is no truth to the rumor that I've got to leave early to get to the Eagles parade. <laughs> but I know some of you are going down there. Make sure you get that new uh, formula that they're selling that's the anti-Crisco oil. So so the, uh, you could get a, as good a perch on this as you can. Mayor Chuck Chiarello, thank you for the invitation to be here this morning, and congratulations on your elevation to the president of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors. You are now one of the few municipal leaders to have been president of both the Conference of Mayors and the League of, of Municipalities. That's a strong testament to the respect you have earned from your colleagues over the years of dedicated service to the people of Buena Vista. And I, by the way, had a, where, where is the, where's the Buena Vista crowd right, here right this there. morning? Uh, we had a nice little chat outside, honored that you all are, are here. Uh, it's a real treat. And I have to say, as a matter of a point of personal privilege, the mayor and I met way back when, uh, way before I ever declared or decided to run for governor when it was cold, dark, and lonely, and he was very gracious to me. Uh, when he had no other reason to be, and I will never forget that. This is a well-earned honor again, Chuck. Congratulations.
I, I also want to uh, I also want to acknowledge your vice presidents uh, and and also your whole leadership team represented up here, uh, whether it's uh, Mayor Chegwidden or Miranoff or Campbell, uh, Executive Director Jack Morrissey has now filled up the empty chair, and all the members of the board and the staff of the Conference of Mayors for your work and commitment to strong municipal leadership. This is an extraordinarily talented dais. I also want to give a shout out to Minority Leader John Bramnick, who's with us today. John, always a pleasure to see you. And of course, I would also like to say thank you to each of you mayors for answering the call to service in your communities, large and small. Our state is a great patchwork quilt of, quilt of communities, each contributing to the strength and the diversity of the whole. It is my understanding, I think I heard this from you, Mayor, that it has been a few years since the governor has come to address this event. Six. Okay, I wasn't. <laughs> but, who, but who's counting? <laughs> I wasn't going to say the number. Uh, I hope this is the beginning of more open communication and give and take among the chief executives of our communities of our state. As, as I have said in every room I've been in now for several years, my goal is to build with you a stronger and fairer economy that lifts every New Jersey family. A stronger and fairer New Jersey is rooted in an economy that creates better jobs at better wages, invests in places where companies and whole industries can grow and neighborhoods can rise, and strengthens communities where millennials want to live where working and middle class parents want to raise their families, and where seniors want to retire. A stronger and fairer New Jersey also means leaders who have the backs of the people they serve, and leadership that does away with an entrenched status quo that has worked for too few, and usually only the well-connected, for too long. To do this will require new thinking. It will require big thinking. It will require us to rethink New Jersey together. Talking with mayors and meeting with mayors is an important way for me and our team to get new ideas, and it will make me a better governor. I look forward to sitting down and discussing with more of you the issues facing both the state and local governments, where potential solutions intersect. up. Good news is I was an actor, so I can hit the back of the room. Can you all hear me back there? <laughs> we are laser focused. I was going to say, we're laser. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are, I don't, know what, I don't know what came over me. We are laser focused on staying close to mayors of both parties up and down this state. In fact, this is my third meeting with a bipartisan group of mayors in the past three days. Please expect more of the same. As I said in my inaugural address only a few weeks ago, today, by the way, is day 23 in case you're counting. So far, so good. I am committing to writing with you a new chapter in our state's history. That chapter has to be the one where we finally put to bed some of the long-standing issues our state has not only faced for decades, but passed on to the next generations. And as I said, I refuse to believe that the root causes of our problems are just some inherent condition of our state that we have to accept. We must change the condition. That will require some honest conversations. Surely we cannot change, as much as we'd like to, everything overnight. We simply can't release decades of built-up pressure in one day or perhaps even in one year. I wish there was one signing ceremony on that mythical deck of the aircraft carrier where we could become stronger and fairer in an instant. But this is going to be a multi-year commitment, and we have started that process immediately. My first goal, our first goal, is to restore proper balance and prioritization to our state's finances. One of my first actions as governor, for example, was to demand a full audit of the tax incentives programs administered by the Economic Development Authority. In other words, we gave you X, you promised Y, you delivered Z. 
What's the delta in each and every case for all these credits that have been put out? Over the past eight years, we have forgotten the need to both provide tax incentives, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, that, bring, that can bring businesses to our communities, and ensure at the same time that we can make necessary investments in the communities where businesses want to locate, in roads, in other infrastructure, in schools, in municipal aid, in mass transit, in direct property tax relief for residents. We have tilted too far only in one direction. We must get the balance back. There are also real opportunities, and you know better than I, for shared services that we need to explore. And certainly getting health care costs under control will further allow us to make the critical investments elsewhere. So too will making sure that we have fairness as a central principle. I am no less committed than I was three months ago to ensuring that the wealthiest among us pay their fair share in taxes and that we close the tax loopholes which exist only for the benefit of a select few, such as hedge fund managers. We are not George Washington, by the way, when we close big corporate loopholes or hedge fund loopholes. Many other states have already done it. This isn't the same old us versus them that has been a guiding principle in this state for far too long, but it's about fairness and equity and common sense. For too long, we have passed on investing in our communities to give tax breaks, frankly, to folks who don't need them. The wealthiest among us have made out just fine over the past eight years and continue to see their incomes climb. Meanwhile, middle class families and seniors have been hollowed out and they continue to see their incomes stagnate. We must turn that around. Property taxpayers have suffered as a result. It's time to stop squeezing the middle class or our small businesses and our seniors and instead restore a true sense of fairness to our state so we can make the long-term investments in our residents and in our communities that we need to make. Now, unfortunately, even before we had the chance to get to these issues, the federal government threw us a screwball in the form of the new tax law. By instituting an immediate $10,000 cap on the state and local tax deduction, or otherwise known as SALT, many of our residents are being hit before we can even begin our efforts to reduce their property tax burden. Many of you in this room, to your credit, recognized this inequity and allowed your residents to make prepayments of their 2018 property taxes even before the state sanctioned it. I applaud you for your foresight in letting your residents get a greater benefit from the SALT deduction now before much of it is ripped away this year. But now we're left with the dual problems of not only high property taxes, but also a limited ability to deduct them from federal liabilities. This gut punch from Congress and President Trump should spur us to action to seek long-term reforms in our property tax system. But at the same time, our residents want and need immediate relief that will not only help preserve their pocketbooks, but also the relative values of their biggest investment, namely their homes. This is one of those times where we're going to have to both walk and chew gum at the same time. In December, I joined with the mayors of Fairlawn, Paramus, and Park Ridge up in Bergen County to unveil a plan for immediate relief. Its effectiveness lays in using the current federal tax system to our advantage, a system that lets taxpayers have payments made to local governments counted as charitable contributions which offset up to dollar per dollar their property tax liability. Shifting property tax payments to a charitable con contribution system not only preserves your local revenues, it also provides residents with significant deductibility from their federal income taxes. 33 states already have in place a system blessed in each case by the IRS that allows taxpayers to make charitable contributions for things deemed important by those states in exchange for an up to dollar per dollar reduction in their taxes. And this is a mix of red and blue states. In fact, it's more red than blue. 
It's typically, not exclusively, typically to allow folks who want to send their kids to private school get the deduction for that tuition payment that they otherwise would get for their property taxes, embedded in which, as you all know better than I, is the public education uh, expense. Bringing this concept to New Jersey's new reality can have a tremendous and immediate benefit for our taxpayers. Taking a large portion of property taxes off the table would mean the overwhelming number of our working and middle class families and seniors would be able to still fit their state income taxes under the new $10,000 cap on deductions. Tomorrow, I'm going to join a group of mayors, bipartisan again group of mayors in Marlboro. Is John Hornick here? John's going to host us in Marlboro to announce even more municipalities which intend to provide their taxpayers with this enhanced flexibility. I urge each of you to do the same. And I call upon the legislature, John, to you and your colleagues on both sides of the aisle, to send to my desk as fast as possible a bill to ensure municipalities can, without any state roadblocks, create the charitable funds needed to implement this program. I will sign it immediately. And this, by the way, transcends politics. It isn't a Democratic or a Republican imperative. It's doing what's right by our citizens. Now, certainly, this is no replacement for meaningful property tax relief. I get that. We all know that there are no easy fixes. But while we commit to the long-term effort, let's also commit to providing common sense and immediate relief for our taxpayers. This is a way we can immediately attend to making New Jersey fairer for the middle class and our seniors. This is the kind of creative thinking we're going to need to move our state forward in the face of growing challenges from a federal administration whose actions so often run counter to our New Jersey values. These are the ideas that I will welcome and really look forward to hashing out with you. It's precisely the kind of big thinking we need to undertake together. And again, I believe with all my heart there's a lot more common ground regardless of what party we're in than that which separates us in this state. I believe that more and more every day. So three weeks and a couple of days ago, the era of us versus them government in this state ended. I am committed to a new way forward that focuses on the we, all nine million of us who reside and call this great state their home. For much of our history, we were a place that other states looked to for creative and effective solutions to vexing public policy issues. And we can be again. I, I didn't grow up here. My wife didn't grow up here. New Jersey, so I've heard what they've said about us over these decades, about us behind our backs. And it was far more often laudable than not. You'd hear states or communities would have some really challenging, hairy public policy challenge and invariably you'd hear, let's look to New Jersey and see what they're doing under leadership from both sides of the aisle. So whether it's on property taxes or pushing back against damaging federal policies, I know the solutions and you know the solutions if we work together are out there. We just need to find the courage to be willing to think big. I know our residents will think much better of us, win or lose, for doing so. They do not want us shrinking away in the name of political comfort and expediency. These are the things we could do together. They are the things I want us to do together. I thank you again so much for the opportunity to be with you this morning. Chuck, thank you again for the invitation that you sent my way many moons ago. I wish you all nothing but continued success both here and in your home communities and I look forward to visiting with you soon in your communities and at gatherings like this. God bless you all and thank you.